thought it's okay. I forgot to put grease on it too. Amen. Amen. Well, I'll invite you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter, I mean not Matthew, Romans chapter 13. Uh, I've been studying Matthew, getting ready for tonight's service, but uh, we're not uh, going to have one. But I, I, I did study. I did study for this morning's service too. Amen. So y'all, y'all are in luck. Uh, Romans chapter thirteen. We've been talking about uh, uh, love's uh, debt, and we're continuing that thought even here on Mother's Day. As love is a is is a depiction of a godly mother, uh, the love that she gives. There's no doubt that uh, that there's that it is one of the greatest pictures of the love the father has for us, is a mother's love for her children. But in Romans chapter thirteen, we've been looking at for several weeks now this thought of love's debt. And I'm not, uh, we're not finishing up by any chance today, but I do want to carry just a little bit farther in that thought. And as we start by reading Romans chapter uh, number 13, verses 8 through 10, once again, it says, O man, O no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. That is a tremendous statement there. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, and thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfillment of the law. Let's pray. Father, once again, I come to you thanking you for your word that it is so great and powerful, Lord, it's able to change the heart of man. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us as we look into it, not only to hear it, but Lord, to be uh, uh, caretakers of it in our own lives. Lord, that it would be something that would be applicable in our lives and that we would live by it. And Lord, I pray that you would help us and mold us and make us. Lord, bless, I pray today, as we do honor mothers and I'm so grateful for the God-given mother that I had that loved me. God, in time of trouble, uh, she was always there for us. And Lord, I pray that you would bless and then, Lord, that you would have your will in our lives. We love you and thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Paul brings us to the real debt that we all pay but never Pay off. It is to love one another. And that's, and that's the debt of love. We walk. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We talked last time about the fact that it's, this is possible because we have a new capacity. A new capacity. In other words, God has poured in our hearts his love. As it says in Romans chapter 5, in verse number 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts because of our salvation, because of what we've experienced from God. We have that love. We have that capacity, that capability to love because of our salvation. And we draw from that capacity. We have that ability We take our bucket of faith and we sink it down into the well of love and we draw it out. We draw it out and then we are able to share it with others. And this is our debt that we owe. We are to love one another. And that kind of selfishness and thoughtful love... uh, is the capability that, that, that is planted in the heart of every Christian. The world can't love like this. It's only through those that have Christ in their life who are able to love like this. And Christians who do not demonstrate love, who do not pay this debt of, owed, um, this debt of love that they owe to everybody, no matter who they are, 
no matter how much they're, they're in competition with you, no matter how unkind they are to you, no matter how bitter they are towards you, is one who is not drawing from that capacity by which God has given them to draw from. And so we begin then with the debt of love which is served by the new capacity of our salvation by which we have. Now the second thing I want us to remember or to look at is the discharge of that love. It's based on a new commandment. In Matthew chapter 22, we were given, Jesus said to him, uh, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And this, he goes on, he says, in verse number 39, And the second is likened unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Basically, as we've seen in Romans chapter 13 in verses 9 and 10, the commandments that are given. Now, here's the wonderful summation of that, that the law that, of God. The Apostle Paul gives us uh, one law, the law of love. And says this one law is fulfill, uh, fulfills all other laws. In other words, all the Ten Commandments. And Paul only names four here. And then says that we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. But all of these commandments are fulfilled in one new law. And that law is what? James calls the law of liberty, the law of love. And it points, and, and the point that Paul is showing us is that love and law are not contrary to one another, are contradictory to one another. Love and law are not mutual, uh, exclusive, mutually exclusive. The law is fulfilled. Our love is a fulfillment of the law. In fact, you can take the whole Ten Commandments and sum, it, and, and sum those Ten Commandments up into, into the, that, those two statements by which we've already read. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, and your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments you have are the all the law and the prophets put together. And, it is the, the, and this is the point that Paul is making to us. If we as Christians say, I can't fulfill the law of God, or how can I keep the law of God? The answer is very simple, and it's right before us. It is love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Now Paul suggests four of the commandments. He gives the seventh, the sixth, the eighth, and the tenth. And he leaves out the fifth and the ninth uh, and the second, uh, of the second half of the Ten Commandments. I don't think that there's any reason why he does that except for that he brings him to a place where he condenses it down to give you an understanding that these are the commandments by which we are to know. He simplifies this list with four commandments and says you are to know this. You have gotten the whole law, and, and the law is summed up in this statement. You will love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law is the collective of one statement. And the key to, to obey the law is love. If we love, we're going to obey the law. That's pretty simple, isn't it? There's nothing difficult about that. So the key to obeying is love. Thou shalt not commit adultery. 
You don't commit adultery because you love too much. You commit adultery because you love too little. Because love doesn't defile. Love doesn't steal purity. Love doesn't rob holiness. Love doesn't do those things. It, it is not like that. Lust does those things. Selfishness does those things. Nevertheless, committing adultery, and you'll never commit fornication because you love too much. It's because you love too little. The same thing is regarded to killing. Thou shalt not kill. I don't need someone to stand behind me and to remind me that killing is wrong. If I love people, I have no desire to kill them. Thou shalt not steal. I'm not going to take somebody's belong, uh, something that doesn't belong to me because I love somebody else. Nor am I going to covet what they have because the fact is that love is the replacement of those things. Love keeps us from those things. Now we're not saying the old is going away and the new is arrived by saying the love is the fulfillment of the law. What we're saying is love is what Paul says, fulfilling the law. And what God is after is not an outward obedience and what we say. I mean, we're not to be like the Pharisees. They said they, would, they didn't commit adultery, and they said they didn't kill, and they said they didn't steal, and they said they didn't covet. But in their hearts... They committed adultery in their minds. They, they murdered with their thoughts. And they, they stole everything that they could. And they coveted other people's positions. And if all you have is an external law. And it's external definitions. You can actually... You, you, you actually... Fulfill it without fulfilling the intent of it. That's why the scripture says the intent is that we love. So that you know that not uh, that you that you know that you don't commit adultery, not because you're afraid of getting caught. But because you love the person. You don't kill because you're afraid of what the consequences are going to be or that you might get caught for it, but it's because you love people. In other words, the keeping of the commandments flows from the heart of love. You can obey the law out of fear. Many men do that because they're afraid of the punishment of God. They may be afraid of God's judgment. And so they obey out of fear. But you don't really full, uh, fully obey the law out of fear. It is not based on that motive or, or on that type of obedience. The Bible doesn't say that we are to dread the Lord our God. It says we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. The Scripture says this right here, many draw near, uh, nigh to God with their lips, but their heart is what? Far from them. It's the heart. It's the love of the heart. Fear will restrain you for, from some evil, and its uh, effects can be sometimes productive, but it is not complete, or it is incomplete. We are not to keep the law out of fear, but out of love. Now there are many people who keep the law out of self-interest. Uh, 
They do it because they think that they're going to get something out of it. People who want to live moral lives because they feel that God will owe them something in the end. And that they'll get a recompense of that. It's not complete that way. It is restraining you from evil, sure. It might even, uh, you might even be able to resist and do some good outwardly. But the true intention of the law is to be cultivated out of a heart of love. That is how the law really is fulfilled. And that's why the Bible tells us in Matthew 22 and verse number 37 through 39. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is likened unto that. that thou shalt love the Lord, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and prophets. Now if we were to go back to Exodus chapter 20, which I'm going to go back there, you don't have to. Uh, uh, but I, I want to show you something. I want to show you the Ten Commandments are a law of love. It's not a law of threat or a law of disobedience. It's a law of love. The first four relate to God. The second half relates to our relationship to man. And it begins in verse number 3 of Exodus chapter 20. And it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, that's a perfect description of love. Love, first of all, is loyal. It has no other gods before the one it loves. It is true. It's not fickle. It's, it's singleness. It has a singleness of mind. It doesn't have any other gods. True love toward God means that there will be no other love for any other deity. Love is law. And if you really love God, you'll be loyal to God. Secondly, can I tell you that love is faithful? Verses number 4 through 6, it says, Thou shalt not make any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to, to them, nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the Father unto the children, uh, unto the children and unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And here we learn that love is faithful. It is loyal, singleness of mind, truth, not fickle. It is faithful. It is keeping a promise devoted to that object or that, that person. It is just another kind of love. A, a, di uh, a, a different dimension of love. Thirdly, love is Reverent. In verse number 7 it says, Thou shalt not take the Lord, uh, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. It is reverent. It holds high the name of God. If you love God, you're not going to curse his name. If you love God, you're not going to be unfaithful to His Word. If you love God, you're not going to disobey Him or allow some other deity in your life. Of course not. Therefore, the summation of the first three that we just went over is simply the demonstration of love. And finally, in... in uh, Exodus chapter number 20 and verses 8 through 11. It says, Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. 
Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou shalt not uh, neither thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor, not, nor the stranger that is in thy gate. For in six days the Lord made, hev- uh, made heaven and earth and the seas and all that in there is, and rested on the Sabbath day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And what is this saying here to us? Love sets apart itself for purity, undefiled, uncompromising devotion of worship. We should say love is holy. Love recognizes the place of God. It recognizes, love recognizes it's part of the of devotion of worship. Love also recognizes that, that God is to be worshipped. If you say you love God... You're going to serve Him. Keep His commandments. If you say you love God, you're going to be faithful to His Word. You're going to reverence His name. You're going to honor Him as He is God. So you might say, then, that the first four of the Ten Commandments summed up, carries the summation by which our Lord Jesus gave us in Matthew 22. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Now listen. If I love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, strength, I'm going to do, am I going to do or have to worry about doing what the law says? No, I'm not. Why? Because love becomes a law unto me. If I love, I'll never have another God. If I love God, I'll never have graven images. If I love Him the way I ought to, I'll obey Him. If I love Him, I will never take His name in vain. If I, if I always remember that He is holy, I'll worship God for who He is. So love is the fulfillment of the law. It's just that simple. It's just that what Paul is giving to us. Now the, remain, the remaining six commandments are the other ones by which Paul relates to us about our relationship to man or our love towards man. For example, in verse number 12, it says, Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long on the, uh, on the land, in the land. Now, this is an expression of love. If you love your mother and father, you're going to honor them, of course. So we could say that love is respectful. It's respectful. Love does not dishonor. It is respectful. It bows to the authority. It submits to those who are worthy of respect. Verse number 13 says, Thou shalt not kill. Of course, because of love, it is protective. Love protects. It does not kill. It sees that everyone is made in the image of God and how precious life really is. Verse number 14 says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Love is pure. It does not defile other people. Love lives to Exalt what is holy, pure, good, and virtuous. Thou shalt not steal. Love is, not, is unselfish. It does not steal. 
It does not take what does not belong to it, it, is, it but rather it gives. Love is truthful. Verse number 16, it does not bear false witness of its neighbor or testifies falsely. It is truth. Love is truth. And love is definitely content. It does not covet its neighbor's wife, nor his house, nor anything that he has. Do you see the point that Paul is making? Love fulfills the law, the whole law of God. The second half fulfilled in the second part of this great law. Love thy neighbor as thyself. The summation of it that Paul is bringing to us. So all of these things do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And you realize that this is a direct quotation from Leviticus chapter 19 and verse number 18. So what is God saying in the Ten Commandments? He's saying two things. To make it even simpler so we can understand it. Love God. Love man. That is the fulfillment of the law. That is what all the law and the prophets hang on. That is simply what it is all about. I know when we look at the Bible many times we see it and we want... Have great wonder. You just look at it and in the contents of it there is so much. And we look at it and we think how in the world can we ever understand or know everything that's in it to do and how will we ever keep it? It's very simple. Love God. Love man. And do what you want. Fulfill all three of those and you will... Fulfill God's Word. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, and your neighbor as yourself, and just do what you want to do. Some people say, what do you mean, do what you want to do? Well, I want you to see, if you live in the condition of what has been given there, what you will want to do is exactly what God wants you to do. That's how we feel, fulfill God's law. You're not going to kill anybody. You're not going to defile anybody. You're not going to steal from anybody. And you're not going to covet anybody's stuff. Why? Because you love them. This message is very simple and clear. In Romans chapter 13, verse number 8, this is what we owe man. Owe mo- oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Are you looking to obey God? Are you wondering what He wants from you? Have you ever thought, Lord, if you'll just plainly say it to me. I remember many times my sister... Or, would talk to me, and when she talked to me, she was very educated, and she would talk, and I wouldn't understand exactly what she was saying. And I'd have to talk to her and tell her, say, just tell me plainly. When we were in Mexico, they would speak to me, and I couldn't understand them, and I said, speak to me as I was three years old. Because I can understand that. God gives it to us plainly here, my friends, that we're to love God, love man. And in doing that, you fulfill all that God wants from you. That is the debt of love. That is the debt we owe. That is what God has for us. My question to you this morning is this right here. 
Is love being acted out in your life? Is love what is revealed in you? When someone looks at your life, can they say he loves God? Can they say he loves people? Because that is what God desires for people to see. It's a debt by which we owe. That can never be paid. But we work to pay it every day. To love one another. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you for your word. That it is so strong and true. And Lord, all throughout it, it is a love story that you've written for mankind. You've directed them in, in, in the law of obedience to a, a submission of love. You revealed it on the cross of Calvary of one who gave his life because he loved. Lord, you commanded us to love others as you have loved us. Lord, in your commandments we see how love is revealed in every aspect that is given there. Lord, I pray God that you'll open our eyes to see Exactly what you're calling us to be. Those who pay the debt of love every second of the life that we live. For it's a debt that we owe all men. Because you loved us. Lord, I pray you'd have your will in our lives. I pray you'll bless as we go through this day. In honor and celebration of mothers, Lord, I pray that you would help us to do that. And that every mother that is, that, that is here and listening, Lord, that they would feel honored as their family honors them. And Lord, I love you and thank you for all you do. Bless and have your will in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Jeff, what we're going to sing. Well, I hope that you'll have a great Mother's Day. Remember, we will not have service tonight, but... Be here on Wednesday. We have a tremendous study going on Wednesday. If you're missing that, you're missing a blessing, I promise you. So be here and, and, and be a part of that. Until then, may the Lord bless you. Shake hands with one another. You're free to go.